Hey guys, it's Mitch. How's it going? Well, it had to happen. We were going to hit this sooner or later. We're going to take a look today at Rob Liefeld's Captain America comic. Are you pumped? I'm not sure if I am. It's a little bit daunting. This is like a, almost like a bucket list book. But before we get into it, if you enjoy the channel, if you feel like you might want to help out a little bit, go over and subscribe on my Patreon. Link is in the description. Gives you access to everything I do. Helps out the channel and helps to buy new comics. So for those of you who are not aware... 1996, uh, the comic industry kind of sucked. The speculator boom was over. The bubble had truly burst. Who could have seen this coming, apart from Jim Shooter? Marvel still hadn't really come up with a solution for what to do in the wake of all the image guys leaving. They had just gotten over the whole Age of Apocalypse thing, so that was something. But they didn't have any real long-term plans. So it was just kind of a case of trying to come up with the next gimmick to rope people in for a little bit. And, I mean... they kind of been doing that ever since, but the next thing they came up with was Heroes Reborn, which was reimagined classic Marvel superheroes. So we're talking Jim Lee on Fantastic Four, Will Sportacio on Iron Man, Rob Liefeld kind of doing Avengers, although Chappie Ape is also helping out, and Rob Liefeld kind of doing Captain America. And he's getting help on this one too, but he's not crediting anybody on this one. So yep, Rob is going to swoop in and help to save Marvel Comics. So, let's see how this goes. And this is right around the time when uh, computer colors were just going way overboard. So we're going to see a whole lot of overused separations, effects, gradients, just all sorts of needless shit. So we might as well start with the cover. Boy, is that ever a classic, huh? It's the first spectacular issue. So spectacular, if we gave you a background, you wouldn't be able to handle it. We got Cap here in his running to the bathroom pose. And again, kind of like that last Zealot shot. Um, just way too big. Like that head is just fucking tiny. You know what? It's not even really the head. It's more the limbs. These legs are too long and that arm. Well, you know what? Shoulders too. Little. Maybe it is the head. Okay. All right. So we're going to kick things off with the Pledge of Allegiance. And some truly terrible uh, shots of World War II. We've got some soldiers shooting some other soldiers. Um, you know, we, the only reason we know that these are the bad guy soldiers is because of the terrible swastika on the arm here. And Captain America, or rather the 40-foot tall statue of Captain America, way off in the background, is on. seems to be on this team side. Because you look at where everybody is layered in here, like we can discard just how terrible these tanks are. There's no detail on these tanks. There's no research being done whatsoever. That's whatever we wouldn't expect anything else but you look at just the progression of the figures here so i mean this guy in relation to captain america is already too small and then captain america is way fucking back also this is a dutch angle this is about how that should be so he's just kind of canted off into the into the distance here we got these giant throwing darts with the two large fins on them because they're sure as shit not planes, and big old smear of a sky, and the color scheme is gray and brown. That's not like sepia, except for Captain America. I mean, I guess that makes him stand out, but it also, you know, it does make the whole thing just look like a giant pile of shit. I mean, almost literally. And we flip, and we're still giving the Pledge of Allegiance, because that saves having to script the following two pages. And we get glory shot after glory shot of Captain America as he sheepishly waits for something to happen. And the title for this chapter is Courage. And I mean, this opening is going to give us a taste of what this entire fucking issue is. It's like jingoism. It's kind of tugging on patriotic heartstrings, but like to a degree that doesn't make any kind of sense in 1996. Like, I'm, I guess the public would have been okay with the kind of patriotism that they're throwing around here in like, 1944? Maybe? But like 50 years later, not in your fucking life. I don't know who would have thought that would even be a good idea. And it turns out that that whole sequence is uh, Steve Rogers dreaming. So Steve Rogers in this, uh, he doesn't remember who he is. He wakes up, he's in a suburban home, he's got his wife and his son, he's got his job that he goes to, and he has no memory whatsoever that he is Captain America other than these dreams that he has. And we're going to really draw everything out. 
There was nothing even resembling action in this until right near the end of the issue. And we can see that this isn't really Rob. I'm guessing Rob is mostly doing like roughs, um, probably to varying degrees of detail. Some pages a bit more than others. Like, I think this is just broad strokes because this doesn't look anything like Rob. This stuff here a little bit more, but like, you know, nowhere near the kind of detail he would normally put on there if he was doing pencils. Like, you look just four years earlier, and I mean, I hate to use Youngblood as the yardstick of quality, but just how much more solid this face is than this face. Part of it is the style of inking, because like, you know, this is Jonathan Sabal, and I think this is probably Rob inking himself, actually. Oh no, this is like the first Danny Miki. Okay, that makes some sense. But like, this is a guy who gives a shit. And that one, not so much. Well, gives a shit might be pushing it a little bit, but he's trying to make something that looks cool at least. Not so much here. This is just going through the motions. Like, this took like seven minutes to draw. That kind of thing. So, wakes up the next day and eating breakfast with his family. And they're all just excruciatingly happy. They're talking about how Steve's going to paint the house. And they joke about how if it were up to him, he would paint the house red, white, and blue. And he's like, wow, that's a great idea. As he laughs hysterically, I imagine. And then it's time to go to work slash school. So uh, he starts doing jumping jacks furiously, I think, until he starts manifesting a bomber jacket. His son's already manifested his. So he starts, like, teleporting. And we're talking the kind of teleporting that just, like, stretches him out indefinitely. So his one foot here is, like, right up in our face while the other one is pretty much right beside all the tables and shit here. I think what he's trying to do is have him shrug on his jacket here. He's still doing it here, I assume, again. Because otherwise, it doesn't, it doesn't make any kind of sense. He just kind of, like, standing in the kitchen goes, Pa! And throws out his limbs and his jacket flies on. Terrible profile shot. Liefeld's not good at them, but, like, he's better than that. Not a chance in hell Liefeld drew this fucking Jeff Darrow-looking shit. Well, Jeff Darrow's pushing it, but, you know, compared to the rest of this stuff, it certainly looks like Darrow. So, on his way to work, being driven uh, in the midst of the void, as you can see here. Yep, yeah, I don't need to draw anything back here. Who's doing the coloring on this? Brian Haberlin. Okay. And some crusty little gremlin bum. Like, he, they, he drew, like, fucking flies around him and everything. He was going to notice Steve on his way into work. And this is Chekhov's gremlin bum, because he's going to show up later in the comic as well. And, yeah, so go straight in. Uh, not a great-looking van. Not a great-looking cafeteria. I, I guess it's okay in that there's some detail going on. Again, the color palette fucking sucks. And every time we get a caption, it's going to have this fucking shield in it with the, uh, with the gradient underneath as well because we can't let anything go by without just drowning it in computer junk and yeah cap tells his buddies that he's dreaming at, that he was like in this this crazy outfit and his buddy who gave him a lift to work has to call in on a secured line to say sir we may have a problem these are pretty fucking weak attempts at perspective here which is kind of what it is like, just draw a guy straight on from the back, straight on from the front, and then you do a completely horizontal table in between them. And just do the bottom edge of the table here in perspective, same with the bench, and that means it's like an isometric view or something. Like, he is doing this at the same time that he's doing the Avengers. But, like, you know, why do that? I mean, you could say because of, like, fucking money, but as far as I can tell, like, uh, Jim Lee's Fantastic Four did sell a bunch, but I don't think the, the Liefeld ones did. They probably sold better than the average book, and most likely better even than the average number one. But I don't think they were, like, hit numbers or anything. I could be wrong. So, of course, uh, Steve falls asleep watching TV like a true American and dreams again of a more interesting comic. Like, seriously, there is no detail on this. Like, there's a little bit, but for a fucking double page splash, are you serious? And all these fucking shields all over the... Oh, my God. These friggin' box cutter knees he's got here. <laughs> and, yeah, just wakes up and goes off to bed. It's a goofy fucking face. 
Again, I don't know how much of this Liefeld is even drawing. He kind of does this a little bit with the lips, but not like to this kind of extent. Around this time, he is fucking around a lot with his style. So I think some of this is just some awkwardness as he is trying out new lines. And he's just like the ones he's picking now are just bad. But then he brings over like one of his Joe the Plumber inkers. He doesn't bring over the best of his inkers, which would be Danny Meeky, I would imagine. Maybe Danny Meeky's making him too much money on, uh, well, I guess it'd be like maximum around now. Because I think we've just finished with Rob getting kicked out of Image. And this is a weird time, if that's the case. Because, like, getting kicked out of Image and then teaming up with Jim Lee on this, uh, to go back to Marvel. Like, that's, oh, that's a fucking mess. Yeah, this is kind of, like, in between that time. When he gets kicked out of Image and he starts Maximum. In between, he does this Heroes Reborn shit with Jim Lee. That's messed up. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is, uh, back in Philadelphia now. Where Carrie Kelly... Uh, is sitting on the stoop, but she didn't get into Juilliard. I think it was Juilliard. Because I guess that's the deal with this particular... Uh, she's going to be Bucky. And her deal, I guess, is that she's like a, a dancer. And that's why she can do flips and stuff. These backgrounds aren't terrible. So um, they're not Rob. Again, that fucking... That computer shit in the background. Because Rob left a little bit too much space. And Carrie Kelly gets uh, approached by her brother here. And his giant meat friend, who is so dense that he's sinking down into the floor. But then that's kind of typical for a Rob Liefeld big guy. Like, Bad Rock did that shit constantly. So anyway, they're going to go to a nearby rally where they can go be racist. Because this is that kind of comic. It was pointed out this is around the time of, like, America in History X. But like, I don't really think you put that in the premier issue of your new Captain America thing. I mean, not if you got any sense, but then again, right? So now we're going to cut to somewhere else in the city. So this is still in Philadelphia. Are there a lot of cathedrals in Philadelphia? Like castle-type cathedrals? Where some dude sits in a big stone chair. And he sits there for a while, and then after a while he goes, Sheep. And this is Masterman. Which does sound like a Captain America villain. Just looking it up, yeah, it does seem to be. It's like a Ubermensch kind of thing. So he sits around in this castle and thinks about sheep with his, not a Nazi swastika, just a regular swastika. And he's going to get a report that the goblin bum has been spotted in town and he has the shield. So they're going to reclaim the shield. This isn't the worst close-up. I mean, it's better than uh, some of the other ones we're going to see in this. This is fucking weird and not at all like Rob. This is right around the Joe Mad era. I wonder if this is that kind of thing, like just taking a little bit from some Joe Mad stuff. It feels like it a bit. And we've got these perfectly straight steps because Rob can't be bothered to even do like a little bit of perspective. Even here... You think he'd come up with something a little bit, but no, he just draws the same lines, only diagonal. And we're going to get a whole lot of this, no angles whatsoever, just drawing dudes straight on. There's a lot of stairs in this issue, and they're all just like Venetian blinds. And so now we're going, this is the rally that uh, those two goofs, these two goofs, were going to earlier. And he's going to say his racisty things, and the crowd shouts back, right on, right on. Because apparently that's the new Heil Hitler. There's some weird stuff going on in this crowd here. Like, everybody's all doing jumping jacks. And some of these are cloned. This is this guy. Which is also this guy. I'm not going to look too much deeper, but that's... Man, that is some kind of fucking lazy when you got to clone these. And one of the people in the crowd here is a spy. And uh, so probably working for S.H.I.E.L.D. And he's going to go searching through the castle while the rally is going on. Uh, he does find some gigantic stairs. And because of the way he does, he, like he doesn't put this column in the middle in any kind of perspective. So it kind of looks like he runs up the stairs a little bit and then runs back down a little bit. And there's those silhouetted faces again, just so he doesn't have to try and figure out how to draw a nose. He did fuck up the nose earlier when he had to draw Steve here. That's pretty bad nose. 
So maybe it's just that's that's what it is. It's just trying to find a way to not draw noses. Like this almost looks like a, who's that guy who's, who did crimson around there, Humberto Ramos. Like it looks like that guy. Anyway, in the basement, he finds uh, some nukes. It's been said before they look like giant crayons. Yeah, or lipstick, or you know something along those lines. Crayons is probably the closest. Now we're gonna cut back to. Captain America with our shot that Rob stole directly from Dark Knight Returns. And you might think there is a vanishing point here. I don't think there is. Because these, yeah, these cross over here. Unless it's all, is it all centered around his crotch? No, because that doesn't make sense with these bricks. Yeah, so with the bricks here, it would have to be down here, but that doesn't make sense with where the... Uh, roofs line up, so he's just faking all this stuff. It's it's okay. I mean, as far as faking backgrounds per and perspective goes, it doesn't look too bad. And then uh, Steve gets approached by the goblin bum. And now we're going to see some real IFL backgrounds. With the, the We got our screen doors and our ultra-wide screen doors. That's so bad. And he keeps doing it. And the bum knows who Steve is and knows about his Captain America dreams. So he tells him to come with him. And Steve does because he's a tiny man who couldn't possibly do anything to him. So they go somewhere. I, I think these are planks, judging by this here. But this is also the treatment we get for stairs. So who knows. But opens up a secret doorway. And pulls out a trunk where he's got Captain America's super shiny shield. All the flares, all the, yeah, just all that computer shit. Just smeared with computer shit. And, yeah, I mean, you can see why he wasn't too worried about following this guy. He's about three and a half feet tall. And <laughs> this shit in the background. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Anyway, so while they're discussing the S.H.I.E.L.D. and, and the Captain America dreams, they get approached by uh, AIM soldiers, I believe, in their giant Spider-Man helmets. And they just shoot missiles at the house that Steve and the Goblin Bum are in. This doesn't look like anything. I completely missed this the first time around. You, you cut to this, not an explosion. This is bright fog. Liefeld didn't even fucking draw anything here. He just said to the colorist, I don't know, I can't think of anything, put an explosion in here. And this was the only way I was able to tell that something had happened. Because, yeah, it looks like, I don't even know. It sure doesn't look like anything's flying towards the houses. That's pretty fucking bad. And just completely impactless. Uh, the house is a pile of rubble now, though. But the shield comes busting out. And just it, it's all over the fucking page here. Because we got to use computer things as often as possible. Oh, there he is. Ugh. He looks like he's wearing a some kind of flesh suit. <laughs> Those don't look like muscles. I don't know. It, no, it looks like he's got some kind of flesh colored armor on with fucking hair plugs all over the chest. Oh, and the legs too. My bad. This is the magic of Jonathan Sabal, I guess. And yeah, so he survived the blast. That doesn't look like Rob at all. That's like fucking Richard Bennett or some shit. Anthony Wynn, one of those fucking guys. So since he's survived, they got to take him out. And we're, we're going to finally get a fight scene. How many pages in is this? Oh my god, it's so many. This is page 40. Why is this page 40? Did somebody think, like, you were getting a deal by getting 40 half-assed Liefeld pages? Like, no wonder none of this looks like anything. He's trying to do 48... Is it 48? It's 50 full fucking pages. Well, not full, but you know. Plus he's doing the breakdowns on Avengers. Like, who thought this was a good idea? So, uh, yeah, he's smacking dudes around with his shield. Cuts a dude wide open, because that's a Captain America thing to do. But this is Rob Liefeld's Captain America, right? This is the extreme Captain America. And he's always believed that all you need is one man to make a difference, to stand up when others are told to sit down, speak loudly for those who have no voice, and to fight the good fight. Now this is uh, Jeff Loeb, I think, doing the script. Who's? I'm pretty sure he's like a real writer. Those sound like Liefeld cliches. 
So I don't even know what the fuck Jeff Loeb is even doing here. Other than going, no, no, give me another five pages of Captain America standing there. Talking to that bum. That's the meat of this comic. So yeah, he's going to leap into action. This is like the one halfway decent Liefeld pose we get in this whole thing. That's okay. You know, no backgrounds, of course, but that's that's for the colorist to sort out. That's a <laughs> pretty half-ass shield, too. No, not trying too hard. Uh, I didn't have a, a proper oval template, I guess, for it. Got all the circle templates here. That's all fine. And, yeah, just smackety-smack. No backgrounds. No real detail. Doesn't look a ton like Rob Liefeld here. Still, that went a little more so. Like, you know, there's only bits and pieces here and there where it actually looks like Rob. And he's smashing the glass out of all the uh, the Spider-Man eye holes. And all at once, it is over. Nearly as quickly as it started. With one significant difference, America's beacon of hope has returned. This is 1996. This is right around the time the first Blade movie drops. And this is what you're going to try and sell to those same kids. This is so fucking corny. <laughs> At least this is a Liefeld pose. Not really, like this detail isn't Liefeld, but whatever. Same with this head. This is not a, a Liefeld head even, like, remotely. And, uh, yeah, so Goblin Bum got killed in the crossfire. This is, oh man, this is all so weak. And he says, rest easy, soldier. Your death will be avenged. Oh, shit. I felt, I got tingles right there. And this guy is just, like, stiff as a fucking board. And, oh. <laughs> That's 90s Captain America, all right. Extreme plastic surgery mishap Captain America. With his fucking arrowhead nose. And all the eye black. And his polyurethane hair. Just this fucking muzzle. <laughs> he's got over his... Oh, my God. He looks like he's half bulldog. Again, with the, oh, all the, all the Captain America shields. And he likes this uh, treatment now for foreheads, at least for the moment. With, like, all the wrinkles and then the cross wrinkles. Ooh, that's a detail. And you thought that was the end, but it wasn't. This is Return of the King, after all. Uh, back at S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters, Nick Fury gets advised that Captain America has woken up. And he's, he's upset about that shit. The Nick Fury doesn't look as bad. I think a large part of that is because his suit is dark colors. So we don't see how little ink work is going on there. No, it's still going. Oh my god, that head's so bad. And yeah, so he's going to send his boys out to go and collect Mr. Rogers. And if he doesn't want to come along peaceable-like, make him. How did Jeff Loeb ever work in comics again after this? Like, regardless of whether or not Rob was writing the dialogue, which it certainly sounds like he is, Jeff Loeb's the one getting it hung on him. That is some grade A crap right there. Okay, so that was Captain America number one. 50 fucking pages, man. That doesn't make any sense. I assume those double page splashes are single pages tilted on their side. Because that would cut down on his workload a little bit. It gives him a bit more page count to fill out the book. There's certainly no more detail there. For having an extra page. Honestly, this is one of the worst looking things I've seen. Like some of the previous Rob stuff hasn't, I, you know, it, it, I don't like it. And it's bad technically. But, you know, I can enjoy a little bit of it for like, you know, yeah, no, this is kind of fun and cheesy. And, you know, it's, it's not great art. It's not good art. But he's putting in some effort on it. At least for a little bit. Like he is completely out to lunch in this shit. And Marvel would agree with my assessment. Because uh, Rob and Jeff would get about six issues on this Captain America run before they get booted off the book because the book was ass. And then he'd get the rights to uh, The Fighting American, which looked very similar. And the events in The Fighting American, from what I understand, very closely resembled the end of the Captain America story. Like to the point where they didn't make any sense as a standalone story. I would love to check that out one day. I don't know if anybody ha even has access to that, because I think they got, like, a cease and desist. But one day, we will look at the Fighting American, perhaps. But we got to get our Captain Americas out of the way first. Later, though. I've had enough for one day. 
So that's going to do it. Thanks very much for watching. If you like this video, please hit like, hit subscribe, hit the notifications so you know when the next one's coming out. Go over and subscribe on my Patreon. That'll give you access to everything I do, from the Blood Force stuff to the YouTube videos before they get uploaded to YouTube, as well as some Patreon-exclusive content. You can also follow me on Instagram and DM me there for commissions, and you can go and join the Blood Force Discord server. But yeah, that'll do it. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.